Here we are at New York City's Penn Station, circa mid-1970s, and this is the consist of the Southern Crescent, which goes from New York to New Orleans. And here is one of the Southern Crescent's 10-6 uh, sleeper rear, river series. Usually there are about three in front of the consist. And we're awaiting a Penn Central GG1, which is going to pull the consist through the Northeast Corridor to Washington, D.C. Awesome. Uh, I was always amazed by these uh, GG1s. They're awesome. Uh, they look the, like these big, powerful whales. And uh, they're special to me. Really cool. And sometime I, sometimes I was able to get that front 10-6 sleeper and be able to look at the back of that GG1 all the way to Washington. Pretty cool. And here we go. Leaving Penn Station. As I remember it. And here's the uh, rail yard outside of Penn Station. And um, Actually, uh, you'd go under a tunnel under the Hudson River and exit Secaucus, New Jersey. And if I had the space, I'd be doing that. Here we are on a curve. And there's an Amtrak Metroliner on its way to New York City. Here's a Central New Jersey GP35 pulling one of its uh, heavyweight for a local. Uh, usually I'd see these uh, around Trenton, New Jersey and definitely at uh, Trenton Station. Pulling into Washington, D.C. I've been at this since I was 15 years old, uh, strictly prototype to uh, Penn Central and Southern Railway. Coming to a stop. Washington Station. There's a Amtrak E60. I'd see a couple of these sitting there in Washington. and GG1 is disengaging here's a Washington switcher gonna put a uh, southern baggage car in the front of the consist and from research I think I need to do some window and door work on that southern baggage car and yes I do a lot of the interiors on uh, all these cars. I basically um, maybe I got two or three to go. And here comes Southern Diner being put onto the consist. And folks are hungry. It's around uh, six, seven o'clock in the evening. Disengaging. And we're awaiting the Southern E9s to pull us to New Orleans. It's an overnight trip from Washington, D.C. Get there the next day around three, uh, uh, 7 p.m. in the evening. And here come the E9s. Uh, three A units, one B unit. It's usually what would uh, be put on. And we, we have some repeat coupling action. I just like to watch couplings. It's cool. Southern Crescent to New Orleans. Here we go. And I remember this train from uh, when I was a little kid, early 60s, when uh, 
the southern passenger cars didn't have the black tops back then. That I think that was a 70s changeover. And I actually remember the uh, dining car China back then before it went microwave. It's pretty nice to have that experience. Here we are pulling into Birmingham. And hypothetically, it could uh, also be Atlanta, the reason being that I do have some uh, switching operations done here, as you will see. And here's some Southern Railway freight action here. There's one of those cool uh, bay window cabooses they used to have. I don't know if they still have them. They were cool. And here comes a southern switcher, which is going to take off the first diner from Washington. And it's putting on a black dome car and a new diner. And that actually uh, is supposed to take place in Atlanta, but uh, for my purposes, I'm using Birmingham. and we're pulling into New Orleans Union passenger terminal there's an overpass and there's a sunset limited on the right there backing into the station Panama limited on the left sunset limited on the right there there's a southern crescent there's Sunset Limited on that track. There's Panama Limited observation car on the left of the Southern Crescent. There's Sunset Limited, and uh, that's before they started using um, the Superliners, kind of a transitional period. And there's a Starlight Dome from the Sunset Limited. little aerial view. We got Panama Limited, Southern Crescent, and Sunset Limited out there with the FP40 in front. There's Panama Limited. As I remember it. And Panama Limited, uh, they usually had an observation car in the end there. It's pretty cool. The back of this station. And there's a Greyhound part of that station too. There's the front of the Union Passenger Terminal and this is still in the making. I need to expand that front driveway to a double lane. It only facilitates one car. And that ain't prototype but it will be. Um, there's the uh, Union Passenger Terminal switcher back then. There's number 600 utility car used to be sitting there took me a while to figure that one out. And here's the interior of the station. There's a front entrance from the inside. Left side of the station. And there's the ticket area. And uh, how could I forget that clock that's always been there? I always like that memory of that clock. It's pretty unique. And here's the right side of the station. And there's a utility vehicle for the station. And uh, there's that, um, sometimes I'd see this heavyweight observation car, that black one in the back. I think it's, it was the Intrepid, a private car put on the end of these trains for some private individual. I don't know. Anyway, you know you're in New Orleans when you get off that car and that humidity hits you. So here we are and um, have a good time. <laughs>